Truth Unfolding by Dogen Zenji Viewing all things as Buddhistic things, then we have wisdom and we have practice, we have life and we have death. We have Buddhas and we have sentient beings. Stripping all things of their essence. We have no delusion and no Satori. We have no Buddhas and no sentient beings. We have no beginnings and no endings. The way of the Buddha inherently soars above such extravagance and austerity, uniting beginning and ending, uniting delusion and satori, uniting sentient beings and Buddhas. It is falling blossoms, uniting love and sorrow, spreading weeds, uniting indifference and dislike, nothing more. If delusion is betaking oneself to practice and realize everything, enlightenment is everything moving ahead to practice and realize oneself. Buddhas are greatly enlightened about such delusion. Sentient beings are greatly deluded about such enlightenment. Some gain enlightenment atop enlightenment. Some compound illusion amid delusion. Buddhas, who are truly Buddhas, do not necessarily realize that they are Buddhas. The fact remains though, that they are illuminated Buddhas and go on illuminating Buddhaness. While you may get closer to understanding 
by exerting body and soul to take in sights or exerting body and soul to take in sounds. Such is not the harbouring of a reflection in a mirror. Such is not water and moon. When one thing is illuminated, others will be dark. Learning this way of the Buddha means learning oneself. Learning oneself means forgetting oneself. Forgetting oneself means being illuminated by all things. Being illuminated by all things means dropping the veil from the body and mind of oneself and the body and mind of others. There may be pauses along this trail of enlightenment, stretching out its emergence. People who start off by going out and looking for the Dharma will only distance themselves from where it lies. Receive the truth, innate in yourself, and you will instantly assume the measure of the real person. Sailing along on a boat, scanning the shore, you may mistake the land as sliding by. You need to focus closely on the boat to see that it's what's moving along. In the same way, surveying all things with body and mind in disarray, you may mistake your own mind and own nature as enduring. Focusing closely on your life and turning back within will clear up the notion that all things are without self.
firewood turns to ash, which does not turn back again to firewood. But do not view the ash as coming next after the firewood that comes first. Firewood occupies a status of firewood in the world, coming first before coming next. It is disassociated from anything you may say precedes or follows it. Ash has the status of ash in the world, coming next after coming first. Life too is an ephemeral status. Death too is an ephemeral status. Consider the example of winter and spring. We do not think of winter turning to spring or speak of spring turning to summer. A person gaining Satori is like the moon nestling in water. The moon remains dry, the water unbroken. A broad, intense glow nestles in inches of water. The entirety of the orb and arching sky both nestle even in the dew on a reed, nestle even in a single drop of water. Just as the moon does not pierce the water, Satori does not rend the person. just as the dewdrop does not obstruct the moon, the person does not obstruct Satori. One is deep to the extent the other is high. The longer you probe the shallows and depths, the broader the moon you should discern in the heavens. If you think that the truth you know already suffices, then that truth has not yet permeated your body and mind. Not until truth suffuses your body and mind will you find that part of it is insufficient. Imagine, for example, looking out from a boat in the middle of the sea. No land in sight, 
nothing but the curving horizon. But we know the ocean is not really curved, nor straight. It has a boundless number of additional aspects. It could be a palace or a jeweled necklace. It is simply our eyes which at this moment cannot go beyond seeing it as curved. The same holds for everything, whether amidst the grit or beyond the ordinary. Of all the many aspects you see, you understand only those that you have developed the ability to. You must realize things are not merely curved or straight. The features of land and sea are countless, constituting entire worlds. You must realize this holds not only for yourself, but for things beneath your feet as well, or even a drop of water. Swim as they may, fish find no end to the sea. Fly as they may, birds find no end to the sky. Yet, fish and birds still remain in the sea and sky, as they have for ages. They simply make greater use of it when needs are great. They make lesser use of it when demands are less. There may be no creatures that do not thus fully explore their contour and no places where they do not rove but birds would perish instantly if they left the sky. Fish would perish instantly if they left the sea. You know the sea sustains life. You know the sky sustains life. I say the bird sustains life. I say the fish sustains life. Thus must life sustain the fish. Thus must life sustain the bird. Beyond this, there is an inevitable further progression. Such is the nature of practice or realization. Yet were bird or fish to attempt to completely understand sea or completely understand sky, before trying to move through sea or sky, they would not be able to attain their way or attain their place in either sea or sky. This place, if attained, unfolds truth in accord with life there.
this way, if attained, is truth unfolding in accord with life along it. This way and this place are neither great nor small, neither within nor without, neither already there nor yet to appear. In similar fashion, to seek and find the way of the Buddha, learn a single thing and apply a single thing. Engage a single deed and master a single deed. Here lies the place and here passes the way. Blurry at first because they emerge and evolve as one exhausts Buddhist teachings. Do not assume that the goal is necessarily a lesson knowable by one's own intellect. Ultimate answers may unfold instantly but not always unfold mysteries. How then can this be called unfolding? Hotetsu Zenji was fanning himself. A monk approached and asked, They say wind's nature eternally abides, no place not visited. So why does the master use a fan too? The teacher replied, you understand only that the breeze is by its nature constant, but not the notion that there is nowhere it has never reached. The monk said, What do you mean then? What is this notion of no place not visited? At this point, the master simply fanned himself. The monk clasped his hands in veneration. Such is the experience that validates Buddhist doctrine. Its true message comes alive. Saying, I don't need to use a fan, since even if I don't, I'll be able to feel the breeze if it's really constant. Saying this misses the meaning, both of constancy and of the nature of the breeze. It is this natural, constant breeze through the Buddha's mansion 
that unfolds the gilding of the earth and transfigures the milky waters of the great river. Thank you.